This is part three of your summer packet on graphing. So we're going to look at data that has been collected and we're going to graph the effect of sugar on the boiling point of water and then analyze that graph. So pause the video. You can either read on the screen or you can read on the paper. Hopefully you paused and read. Hopefully you understand most of that information, but I do want to point out a few things. The first thing is your independent variable is the thing that you're changing, so that's going to be what's called the cause. And the dependent variable is what you're measuring because of that change, so how is it going to be affected by it? So that's called the effect, so cause and effect. So what I mean by that is this. Your independent cause is your mass of sugar in grams. That's what that G is. So this is what we're changing in our experiment. The effect or the dependent variable is our boiling point temperature in degrees Celsius. So in other words, I'm hoping at this point you know that the boiling point of pure water is 100 degrees Celsius. But if I look at this data, when I add a solute, in this case sugar, it changes the boiling temperature of that solution. Now that um, now that pure water has something in it, like a solute, and it is dissolved, now it is now a solution. So I don't know about you, but I do not see 100 degrees Celsius on here. So the cause, the independent, adding that sugar to the pure water and now making it a solution, how does that boiling point uh, are, is affected? So again, pause, read, and then I want to bring things to your attention. So the first thing we need to do is make a graph of this information. So I tell you what's on the x-axis, I tell you the increments, in other words, each line, what does it represent, and I'm telling you you're starting at zero. I'm also telling you on the y-axis, you're going by 0.2 increments, in other words, every single line is represented by 0.2, but this is a little tricky too. I'm telling you to start at 100 degrees Celsius and not at zero, and I'm telling you to do that after that zigzag line and that zigzag line is really a break. So guys, you also want to remember to include labels on both your x and y axis with the units and include a title. So this is your graph. Now your paper might look a little bit different. Uh, mine are a little bit more like rectangles versus yours looks really like squares. And again, it was just to make sure that I fit all the information on my screen to show you. So now here's our break. And the reason for that break is, well, we're starting at 100 degrees Celsius. So if I'm starting at 100 degrees Celsius, let's say if I was starting at zero, boy, that would be a lot of lines that would be unnecessary. So really all we're doing is chopping our graph paper uh, to the the point where we actually need the information. So here's our zigzag break. A break. Our first line is 100 and I told you to go by 0.2. So I don't know about you, but I don't need to label every single line. So this is going to be 100, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. I'm going to label the 101. I'm going to count up again and label the 102. Now I'm going to label my top line as 102.8. However, you, I do believe, have more lines. So you can continue on and label maybe 103 or 104. Now remember to label what's on the side boiling temperature and putting your units in parentheses. Now if you want to pause the video, you can do so and do that part or you can continue playing and see uh, what else we have to do here. So on the bottom, it does tell us to start at zero. And again, every line is 10, but I'm not going to do every line. I'm not going to label every line. So 10, I'm going to label my 50, 100. Uh, so I'm going to label every 50 all the way through. And again, your unit, I'm sorry, your label, mass of sugar, and your unit of grams. The other thing I tell you to do, of course, is make it a title. So at this point, make sure that you have all of your numbers that you want labeled on your graph, your labels, your units, and the title. So back to the data. Now we need to plot our points. Well, our mass is on the x-axis and your y is on the, I'm sorry, your boiling temperature is on the y-axis. So we're going to do x, y, right? So we're going to find our x value, our y value, and put a dot. So we should have one, two, three, four, five, six dots all together. So again, at this point, if you want to pause and do that yourself, or again, do a couple with me and then do the rest and check your answers. Again, yours might look slightly different than mine because again, my 
define are rectangles versus um, squares. So I believe the first uh, dot was 50, and I believe it's like 100.5. So again, this was 100, this is 100.2, so 100.1 is right in the middle, so I'm going to go kind of in between 100.5, and I'm going to put a point, a dot. Again, your dot might not be as big, I'm just showing you where that would be. So do your X and Y all the way through for your six points. And again, my last point has to be above the 102 point eight because it's more than that so I just kind of estimated so yours should look similar again might not look exactly the same but similar so pause the video and make sure that you have that done so pause the video again make sure that you read this and then I can point some things out hopefully you read this paragraph and uh, understand it either on the screen or in your packet. So what we're going to do is make what's called a best fit line. Because I don't know about you, this to me looks more like a straight line than a curve. So a better way to analyze information is to actually make a straight line. So what we're going to do, again, the best of your ability, and hopefully you make a line that's above the zigzag. It doesn't have to be above the 100. Yours might be below the 100, uh, but it should be above that zigzag line. So again, pause. You might want to use a ruler now um, and try to make the best fit line. Now that we've completed, let's analyze some of these questions. So your numbers, just as a reminder, your numbers will probably be different than my numbers. So I'm going to show you this information and how to work the graph and work the answers, uh, but make sure that you're using your numbers and not mine. So using your graph uh, for mathematical problems, I want you to show your work. And remember, we need to include those units in your answer. So number one, pause, read, and see if you can come up with an answer. Hopefully this makes sense. As uh, one increases, the other also increases. So that's called a direct relationship because they do the same. So somehow or another, you should have something along those lines. Doesn't have to be the exact words I use, uh, but it should be similar. Number two, now we need to find uh, the slope of the line. So we're going to do rise over run, which hopefully you've learned in math class. I'm going to find two y numbers, the big minus the small, and two x numbers, the big minus the small. So really what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose two dots on my graph. Now I'm going to choose two dots that are easy to read. So hopefully you choose two dots that are easy to read. So one dot I'm going to find right here, kind of like crosses here. So I'm going to choose that dot. So this is going to be my uh, rise number, right, my boiling point, my y number, uh, and this is going to be my x number, and then I'm going to choose another one. Again, this to me uh, was easy to read on my paper. I kind of try to do it uh, on the graph here on the PowerPoint, and uh, my x. So I have my y2 minus y1, my, my x2 minus my x1. So again, you're going to use your numbers here, but I want to see the work. I want to see the numbers you used and put those dashes in in the graph so I see that you've done it correctly. So again, I'm putting in my numbers that I chose on my graph. I'm actually going to do the mathematics of it. And in chemistry, we really don't like fractions. So I'm actually going to divide those two numbers out and this is my answer. Now, don't forget to include your unit. Your unit is going to be your rise unit over your run unit, kind of like miles per hour. This is degrees Celsius per gram. So again, pause the video if you're having trouble here. This might be a place where you want to stop, pause, rewind, uh, and listen to my information again. Or you can always email me. My email address is on the front of the packet uh, if you're really uh, lost. So number three, what is the value of the y-intercept of your line? So in other words, when x equals zero, where's your y? So you should have made your line long enough that crosses the y-axis. If you didn't, just take your ruler and extend it. Um, so now you're going to find that value. Again, my value is uh, above the 100. Your value might be between the break, uh, or I should say below the 100 degrees Celsius. So again, it's up to you, but you use your numbers of your graph. So mine was 100.15 degrees Celsius. 
Number four, again, you're going to use your numbers. Now we're going to form this equation of a line, this y equals mx plus b. Uh, so again, look this over. It tells you exactly what values is going where, but you yours and your numbers, and these are mine. That's all I need is that y, uh, I'm sorry, the equation of the line um, formula using your values. So this is just a little extra. I want to make sure that that y really comes out to degree Celsius unit because our y is what's on that y axis. Remember, the y is the y axis versus our b is the y intercept where it actually crosses the line. So our slope we found out to be degree Celsius per grams. We're going to multiply, right, when we have two things um, in parentheses next to each other, we're multiplying, and our x axis is in grams. We're going to add degree Celsius, which is our y intercept. So let's look at this area first. Hopefully this kind of makes sense where you look at this and go, hmm, well if I have degrees Celsius over grams times grams, really those grams are going to cancel out and I'm left with degree Celsius, right? So then we're going to add the degree Celsius here and when I add units, it just stays the same unit. And again, if this is a little complicated, rewind and rewatch it, uh, but at the same time, this is just a preview of what we're going to be learning throughout the course, how to deal with units. So now we're going to extrapolate the graph. So pause, read, and see if you can figure this out on your own, and then play my video to make sure it makes sense. So if we're using 500 grams, that means, again, we're plugging and chugging into our uh, equation of the line, right? So again, you're using your numbers. My numbers were these. This was my slope. This is the 500 grams they gave us, and this was my y-intercept. So I multiplied and I added, and this is the number I get. And again, we already verify that our y-value is degree Celsius of units. Six, now we're going to interpolate the graph. Again, pause and make sure, see if you can figure this out and then play my video to continue. So when we get this value, this is going to be called the theoretical value. Sometimes it's called the true value. Sometimes it's called the actual value. So we're going to use our y equals mx plus b to find our theoretical. We're going to say that using the mathematics is actually going to be more accurate than just finding information on the graph. So we're going to plug and chug like we've done before. Now I'm giving you that y value. The slope is mine. The x is what we're trying to find how many grams, and of course your y-intercept. So now this is just a little bit of algebra. How do we find this x value? Well, the first thing we're going to do is subtract on both sides. Then we're going to get our number, do our subtraction. We still have our uh, slope and then the x that we're looking for. So now I'm going to divide um, my slope from both sides and find my x value. So this is what I'm going to consider the theoretical or the true value. Now we're going to go back to our graph and we're going to say, okay, at 101.4 degrees Celsius, we're going to put an X as to where the experimental value of the grams would be. So in other words, I'm going to look at 101, what was that, 100, I'm sorry, I'm going to go backwards here, 101.4, so I'm going to find 101.4 temperature and I'm going to mark an X where my line crosses and I'm going to find that X value, all right, so I put a star here, you can put an X, whatever, circle, and now you can, you find your number. My number is 128.5 grams. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a true value and we have an experimental value. So we're going to find out how the, the error, um, the percent error that this caused, right? Because when we do experiments, it's not going to be exact 100% of the time. So we're going to talk about errors when we are doing when we are going to do um, labs. So one thing I want to notice is, uh, first of all, this is the entire uh, equation or mathematics of it. Uh, I want to bring to your attention these guys. That's called absolute value. In other words, this top number has to be positive. When we're dealing with percent, it has to be positive. So I'm going to take my experimental value. In this case, it was my number seven, my theoretical value. Now, if this number, number six, was bigger than my number seven, I would have just switched it okay not a big deal we just need to know that we're we're subtracting and of course your number six answer on the bottom now again this is a little tricky because you have to do mathematics like three times I'm going to tell you to subtract 
hit the equals, divide, hit the equals, and then times 100, hit the equals. So again, on your paper, you're using your numbers, but show me the numbers you use, and then times 100. Then pause and do the mathematics. I got 10.72%. So there are always three possible reasons for errors, three categories, human, equipment, and calculations. So hopefully you can think of at least one error, one error in each of those calculations. Okay, make sure to do this.